Real Mystery Theater presents... David McCord, is the garment we continually alter, but which never seems to fit. Perhaps, then, the lesson we should learn from this is both clear and simple. Instead of trying to alter the garment, we might do better to try to change ourselves. But hasn't it always been easier to let out the waistline than to go on a diet? What is he looking for? His girlfriend. His red-headed girlfriend. Does he know where she is? No. Does anyone else know? Sure. Practically everyone else. Well, where is she? She's dead. Hasn't anyone told him? Everybody's told him. He just won't believe it. Maybe he knows something we don't. <laughs> mystery drama, Redhead, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. I'll be back shortly with that one. It was just a habit I got into. Whenever I laughed, I kind of covered my mouth with my hand like this, you know? One day, it dawned on me that I was doing this because I was embarrassed by my teeth. They were really yellow from smoking. Topol Smoker's Tooth Polish, a special combination of polishing agents and a rich foaming cleaner, formulated to help remove ugly yellow tobacco stains. Topol is gentle enough to be used instead of regular toothpaste. My teeth are nice and bright again. Topol, mint flavor in the blue package, fluoride in the red. Mr. Gardner, those old newspapers are too heavy for you to lift. My back just told me the same thing, Sally. Now, you just sit there. I think my dad has some Don's pills in the house. Don's pills? Just what this nagging backache needs. Good advice. Don's pills for temporary relief of simple backache pain due to overexertion, stress, or strain. Use only as directed. Hello? Hi, Mr. Gardner. How's your back tonight? My back's doing just fine. Thanks to you and those Don's pills. This is Lena Horn. Before I began my volunteer work for the American Cancer Society, I didn't know too much about what the society actually does to help people. I knew that the rates of blacks getting cancer are higher than among whites, and the cancer death rates are higher, too. But it was only when someone who means a lot to me got cancer that I learned how much even information alone can mean to a family when the disease strikes. When you don't know where to turn, help like that is a real blessing. Of course, we have other services and rehabilitation programs available for everyone. I must say, when I learned about all this, I was very proud of my organization. That's why I'm asking you to be generous when you support our research, education, and service and rehabilitation work. Remember, it's your American Cancer Society, too. People get themselves killed for a variety of reasons. Or perhaps for a variety of no reasons. Our story begins with the plans for the evening of a Miss Maddie Wilton. Miss Wilton is 26 years old. She is a secretary. She would love to have her own apartment, but rents being what they are, she lives with her widower father. Maddie Wilton is going to be murdered tonight. Do you know why? I dyed my hair. Yeah, Fanny went and did it, Ellie. Well, I, I thought it would be a, a, a light red, but it turns out to be kind of auburn. I <laughs> sort of like it. Okay, so you tell me. Where shall we go? Um, so how about that place, uh, Harrigan? Well, let's give it a whirl. About 10.30. Gee, well, we may run into some cowboys. Although, with our luck, they'll probably be rustlers. Yeah, I'll meet you there. Are you going to stop the bus? No. 
No, wait me no. I only discharge passengers at a bus stop. I, I rang the bell at a bus stop. You rang the bell as we were passing through the bus stop. Well, can't you stop now? No, I cannot stop now. Why not? Because it's against the law. Well, well where are you going to let me off? At the next designated legal stop. Which is where? 18. Listen, I just happen to be in a hurry. <laughs> You're probably in a hurry to get to that gin mill on 12th. Halligan. Don't worry, they won't run out of booze. Hey, why don't you watch where you're going? Look, I know where I'm going. You know where you're going. And here we are, 18. You mean I have to walk all the way back to 12? It's a nice night. A little walk won't kill you. Thank you very much. Red. Huh? What? What? It, it's me, Red. It's me. Who, who are you? It's me, Joey. Huh? I've been looking all over for you, Red. Oh, I'm sorry. I... What do you mean you're sorry? Well, you, you must have me confused with somebody else. Oh, no, don't say I'm confused. I don't like it. Okay, okay, so you're not confused. You're just, just mistaken. Everybody says I'm confused. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Where are you going? You're not going to walk out on me again, Red. Wait, would you please excuse me, Look, huh? Red, you don't know how much I love you. No, please. I need you, Red. I swear to you, I need you. Red, please, don't leave me again. Hey! Red. Hey, let me go! Look, Red, I just want to talk to you. Let me go and I'll scream. No, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. I only want to talk to you. I don't want to hurt you. Why are you fighting me all the time? You make me so mad. You make me so mad I could kill you with my bare hands. Alice, you want to pour me some more of that coffee? It's your third cup, Harry. So what? It's my only vice. Hey. Hmm. And will you look at this? What? Heavyweight championship bout set. Look, I'm only going to give you half a cup. Can you believe a thing like this? Gee. <laughs> These two ham donies. What's it? What's a ham donie? Uh, some mug, some thick-headed pug. Oh, I get the idea. They're each gonna get ten million a piece. Hey, don't put sugar in it. I hung up the gloves too soon. No, you hung them up just in time. <laughs> you hear how the cash register bells are ringing these days? Oh, well, what's the good if you wind up hearing the ringing in your head, huh? Well, maybe I can come back for just one more. Are you crazy? You're 45. These punks today, what do they know? Bunch of headhunters, that's so. They couldn't lay a glove on me. It's gone, Harry. Gone. The wind is gone. The speed is gone. The punch is gone. No. No, the punch, that's still here. <laughs> but the rest of it... Oh, if I could have just one more good payday. You've got it, Harry. I don't care how much they make. Look how many of them are like you. After 23 years in the ring, you can see straight, sing straight, you can hear straight, you can talk and walk straight. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Now what? Is he still fighting? Who? Oh. Joey Malloy. Who's Joey Malloy? You remember Cannonball Joey. I fought him 22 years ago. My first bout as a pro. I knocked him on the third. And he's still in the ring? <laughs> You're lucky, Harry. Oh, you got a good job driving the bus and with what we were able to salt away. I mean, just the two of us. No, no kids. Yeah. No kids. Uh, what's in the front part of the paper? Oh, there was a murder last night. <laughs> so what else is new? Oh, these girls who've been getting killed. This is the fourth one. Yeah, well, I don't have to read about that. And you know what ties them all together? Each one of them had red hair. And, and each killing was on a Friday night. <laughs> Some nuts. Oh, look at her picture. Well, she's so beautiful. It, it could break your heart. Maybe. Maybe if I started working out again. You know, Harry? Yeah. If Mary had only... You know, I, I believe she'd have grown up to look just like this girl, this uh, Madeleine Wilton. Huh? Look. Uh, no, no, I don't want to look. Oh, um, uh, Mr. Otis Salt, who lives at the corner of uh, Van Buren and 17th, he thinks he heard the bus stop at about 10.45. Mm, I 
make a run in a cannonball, Joey Molloy, again. And very soon after that, he's sure he heard a woman's voice scream for help. <laughs> Maybe I could slip him a couple of bucks. Harry, Harry, isn't that about the time that you're driving up Lower Van Buren? I mean, uh, around a quarter to eleven? Well, whereabouts are you on Van Buren, Harry? At what, 18th, 19th, 20th? Uh, what's the difference? But this, this girl, Harry, she was found dead on Van Buren and 17th at just about that time. Uh, what girl? The one who was killed. She could have just gotten off your bus. Give me that paper. Harry? Harry, what's the matter? Oh, no. Harry? No. Harry, what is oh, it? good Lord. Oh, Harry, look what you did. Harry, where are you going? Harry, tell me. <laughs> Homicide, Lieutenant Lawson. Yeah. No, not a thing. I know it's the fourth murder in just over a month. Look, you guys are getting mileage out of your Jack the Ripper angles, Jerry. Now, as soon as we get something, we'll fly for that one. All you media types will get a piece. Now, get off my back, will you? Uh, Lieutenant uh, Lawson? Yes? Who are you? Uh, they said you were in charge of the red-haired lady killings. So? Uh... I know who killed this one. Uh, uh, this Madeleine Wilton. Yeah? Who? Me. Uh-huh. All right, I'll get a stenographer in here. First, uh, I want to read you your rights. You are not required... Oh, to... Wait a minute, wait a minute, just a minute. I'm I'm not some nut that runs around professional murders. Well, what are you? I'm a bus driver. Uh, here's my ID. I work for the city, same as you do. My, uh... My name is Harry Collins. Harry Collins? Yeah. Why is that name familiar? Uh, now, last night, this girl... Why do you look familiar? The one that got murdered, the uh, the latest one, this Madeleine Wilton. She gets on my bus at the Circle. I head up Van Buren, and I let her off at 18th. Yeah? And then I drive away. Well, then how did you kill her? Because she didn't want to get off at 18th. Where did she want to get off? Why didn't you leave her off at 12? Because she didn't pull a bell in time. Uh, and I was out of the designated stop. Uh, if I'd let her off at 13th or 14th or 15th, even 16th, she'd still be alive. But uh, no, I made her ride to the next stop, the next legal stop. And that's where he was waiting for her. You don't know that he was waiting for her? He was waiting for somebody like her. See, if I'd left her off where she wanted. She'd be alive today. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't your fault. You, you know what she said to me when she got off? She said, you mean I have to walk all the way back to 12? And then you know what I said? I said, it's a nice night. Well, the walk won't kill you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. No. Go ahead. Tell me it ain't my fault. Go ahead. Tell me. Look, these things happen. What does that mean? Now I recognize you, Harry Collins, the old fighter. The old fighter, yeah. Sure. Many's the time I saw you at the St. Ambrose Bowl in the city arena. You always gave the crowd the money for it. Hey, you look great. Boy, you sure knew when to quit. But it's a pleasure to meet you personally, Harry. Yeah. So so what's going to happen now, Lieutenant? Uh, to me? To you? Well, on account of me, she's dead. Isn't there some way I should have to pay for that? Look, Harry, all you did was obey the law. Had you stopped on any block other than a designated, any cop could have given you a ticket, any spotter for the bus line could set you up for a fine. So she's dead because I obeyed the law. That's crazy. Look, we're doing everything we can. We generally get guys like this after a while. Lieutenant, what am I going to do? Well, first thing, you better go home. How can I go home? Life has to go on, Harry. Yeah. Now, listen, any time you feel you want to talk to somebody, come on in and we'll shoot the breeze. If... You get close to this guy. You, you let me know, too, huh? Sure, Harry. Sure. You want to go out to a movie, Harry? No, Alice. You want to watch the TV? No. Well, what do you want to do? Nothing. Well, you can't just drive your shift and come home and do nothing. Especially now that you're on days. I'm going to go to sleep. Harry... 
It's not your fault. Yes, it is. Hurry, listen. Leave me alone, will you? Here we are. 18th Street. You mean I have to walk all the way back to 12th? It's a nice night. A little walk won't kill you. A little walk won't kill you. Harry! A little walk won't... <laughs> Harry, Harry, are you all right? Yeah, oh, you were tossing around. You woke me up. You all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, go, go back to sleep. I was just... Will you uh, uh, go back to sleep, huh? Let me off. Let me off. I'll let you off at 18. I don't want to get off at 18. You have to get off at 18. Don't make me get off at 18. Why not? A man's waiting there to kill me. I can't help that. Let me off here at 13. That's... At 14. I can't let you off here. You have to let me off here. It's not a legal stop. Please. I can't let you off. It's not a legal stop. Harry, it's not a legal... Harry, uh, Harry, uh, wake up. I can't. Uh, Harry. Uh, Harry, uh, wake I, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Harry. Yeah. Harry, you got to get hold of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I know. Look, Harry, you want to see a doctor, huh? Maybe I should see a priest. If that'll help. No, it's no good. I couldn't tell him either. What couldn't you tell him, Harry? I couldn't tell him the real reason why I didn't let that girl off. At 12th Street. Oh. And here all along we thought we knew. Obviously we don't. Well... Harry may balk at revealing the real reason to a doctor and even to a priest. But you know he is going to tell it to us just as soon as we return with Act Two. If squeaky doors, sticky locks, and rusty tools are a problem around your house, True Value Hardware Stores offer a simple solution. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you WD-40 lubricating oil is the answer to these and many other problems caused by rust and corrosion. Among its many uses... WD-40 will free sticky doors and windows, as well as rusty bicycle chains and wheels. And it's just $1.29 for a 9-ounce can. So look for the familiar blue and yellow can with the bright red cap at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Hello, I'm Nancy Marchand. When we speak of priorities, there's one that comes first with most of us, the well-being of our families. Unfortunately, millions of families in developing countries know only poverty hunger, and sickness. You can help them through care. Your contributions will provide the means for survival today and self-support tomorrow. Contribute to care. Box 576, New York, 10156, or your local care office. This is Gene King for your Better Business Bureau. If your idea of summer fun is camping out... Whether you sleep in the luxury of a recreational vehicle or rough it on the ground with only the stars above you, there's one piece of gear that's a must, and that's a good sleeping bag. A well-made, lightweight summer bag is a good first choice for novices and for those who aren't planning to do too much cool weather camping. But if you're heading for the mountains or planning to take a trip in the spring or fall, a three-season bag will be a better choice. Now, these bags are warmer and more expensive, but they'll keep you comfortable at near freezing temperatures. But when you go out to shop, compare bags carefully. Make sure to check the quality of the zipper to find out if the bag is easy to roll up and store, if it's the right size for comfort, and if it's constructed so that the filler won't come out. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. society in which everyone broke the law all the time would be impossible. But a society in which no one broke the law occasionally would be unbearable. Just as the occasional white lie enhances friendships, so does a little harmless, unimportant wrongdoing make life easier and happier for so many of us. Within reason, of course. You said you didn't let her off before 18th because... 
There was no designated bus stop. Well? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I tell you. Harry. And that's what I tell myself. Now. Did you mean you had another reason for refusing to stop the bus and let her off? Yeah. What reason? You looked at a picture in, in the paper. You remember what you said? I said... I said she was beautiful. Yeah. How beautiful? Harry, what are you driving at? How beautiful did you say she was? I, I don't remember. You remember. You said she was so beautiful. It could break your heart. Well, it broke mine. If, if Mary had grown up, she'd look just like this. Well, I saw it too. The minute she got out of the circle. Suddenly it was our own little Mary. The same pretty face, but on a girl in the 20s. And, and that red hair, I... I... It, it, it's all right, when, Harry. When, when she wanted to get off at 12th Street, I knew where she was going. Halligan's. And I just didn't want a daughter of mine to go to a joint like that. Oh, Harry. I just didn't want my daughter to go to Halligan's. Why not? I, I understand it's just a, a singles bar. All the young people go to places like that today. No, no, no. Not my daughter. <laughs> No, no, she'd have been different. Would, wouldn't you have wanted her to, to, to be different? Oh, Harry, listen. Do, do, do you have any idea how I feel? Yeah, but where do you go from here? Are you going to burn up the rest of your life in, in, in useless anger? Alice, I did something criminal. Stupid. I, I can't let it rest. Don't let it rest. Try to, try to make up for it by doing something, something wise and, and decent in her memory. Like what? Like like you could help somebody to... Hey, Harry. Harry, the morning we read about it in the paper. See, you remember there was this item about that poor punch-drunk pug, that, uh, that guy Joey? Mm, yeah, uh, uh, Malloy. Yeah, I, you felt so sorry for him. You, you wanted to give him a hundred bucks. Did you? Well, <laughs> I guess with all this, I, I, I just forgot I... Do a good deed, Harry, for her... Give him the hundred. Give him more, Harry. Help him. The two of you started in the ring together. And, and look at both of you now. You have so much, Harry. He's got nothing. Do a good deed in the world. Let him be your penance, huh? Mm. Poor Joey, my lord. Yeah. Yeah. I'll find him today. <laughs> I'll, and I'll help him all I can. And, and Alice, maybe I'll be rewarded for it. Huh? Maybe the good Lord will lead me to the killer. Uh, anybody here? Hi, who are you? The door was open. Uh, did I wake you up? Oh, yeah. You're Joey Malloy, all right. I recognize you. Uh, you know who I am? I can't remember. I'm Harry Collins. Harry Collins? Yeah, you and me. We fought at St. Ambrose 22 years ago. We was both up from the amateurs. Harry... Co Harry Collins. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah, cannonball Joey Malloy. Ah, that's the name my manager gave me. Hey, sit down. Come on, sit down. I know this place looks like a dump, but I'm going to move to a new place. Sure, I remember you now. It was the sixth round at uh, St. Ambrose. I knocked you out in the third, right? Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, sure. Well, what, what, what can I do for you, Harry? Uh, you know, I've been looking for you all these years, Joey. You have? Uh, you remember uh, right after the fight we went out to celebrate together? Oh, we, we, we did? Yeah, yeah. And and I lost all my dough. Somebody stole it off me in the locker room. And, and you said, hey, let me lend you a C-note. Uh, you remember that? Uh, well, uh... Yeah, sure, sure you do. I'll even tell you who was with us. My wife, Alice. Uh, you remember her, the blonde? Oh, and Red was there too then, huh? Yeah, Red? Yeah, my girl. Yeah, she had this red hair, so I called her Red. You got... You remember that, Harry? Uh, sure, 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 sure. Now I remember. Uh, anyhow, before I forget, uh, you want to take back the scene, huh? Hmm? Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Hey... You want to come see me a week from next Friday night? Chick got me a match at the Grove. Uh, hey, Joe, you and me, we're getting kind of up there. Uh, you know what I mean? When are you fighting again, Harry? I owe you a rematch. You want it? No, 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 no. I hung him up, Joey. 
you, huh? Why? You look in great shape, man. Hey, listen, you want Chuck Cougar to get you some action? His chick, huh? Well, he could always get you on a card at Appleton or Van Buren, even a Grove, all in places. All them places. Uh, where can I find Chick? Oh, he should be hanging around the gym. You know Teddy's over the Fourth Street? Yeah. Yeah, Teddy's. Collins. Uh, you trying to kill Joey Malloy? What's that supposed to mean? He got no more business in the ring than I have. And I'm in twice as good shape as he is. Well, you ought to know, Harry. Nobody fights unless he gets an exam by the doctor on the boxing commission. <laughs> Some exam. You hold the glass to your mouth, and if you're breathing, you can go on. I don't write the rules. No, chick. You just break them. Did I ever hold a gun to his head? No. You held out something worse. You held out a dream, a rosy dream of becoming a champ. I was lucky. I had a wife who was in my corner, all the way. She made me wake up. But who'd he ever have? You. Not my fault. You couldn't talk to him. Nobody could. Not even his girl. Not even Rev. He wouldn't listen. So she walked out on him ten years ago. What could I do? Could I leave him all alone in the world? So... So I get him a couple of rounds now and then. At least he can eat. <laughs> You're so big-hearted looking after his interests. Tell me, you still take your cut? Hey, look, I got to live too, don't I? Why? Did you see Joey Malloy today? Yeah, Alice. And? If you ever hear me say anything about trying to come back, just look me square in the eyes and keep saying... Cannonball Joey Malloy, Cannonball Joey Malloy. He's that bad, huh? Yeah, he looks like he's been hit by a cannonball. <laughs> you want to go to a movie tonight? No, I just want to sit home. Do what? Uh, some thinking. Okay. What do we know about this thing? First, it happens on Friday night. Tonight's Friday night. Yeah. Can we expect it again? I don't know. Uh, maybe Friday's just a coincidence. Still, it doesn't happen any other night. Mm. All the girls who were murdered have had red hair. And what does that mean? Could that be a coincidence? Are you asking me? There could be something that ties all those girls together. Like what? Like anything. If, did they know each other? Not according to papers. Or to Lieutenant Laufer. I asked. Well, what, what else do we know or, or don't know? Well, they all take place, uh, the killings, in different neighborhoods. So we're no further along, are we? Yeah. Alice, i got to get this guy. There must be something I can do. You want to pour me another cup of that coffee? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's my fourth. <laughs> How come you're not giving me a lip? Mm. Just if you're so upset, so unhappy, I don't have the heart to. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so listen, turn on the radio. Huh? Mm, I already heard the news. And? It didn't happen last night. You sure? Well, it would have been on the radio, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it didn't happen. Hmm. Now I wonder. About what? What else didn't happen last night? What do you mean, what else didn't happen? Let's say this guy, whoever he is. Goes out and kills because certain conditions are there. Mm-hmm. Well, last night they weren't there, or not all of them was there. Like what? Uh, like, uh, oh, okay, this isn't it, but like maybe he needs a full moon. Oh. Yeah. Take a look at this. Hmm. Maps. And what? Where all the murders happened, see? Mm-hmm. See, this was the last at Van Buren. Yeah. And one before at Nostrand, before that at Appleton. Mm-hmm. And before that, see, right here, Grove. Yeah, okay, okay, so what? I don't know. So what, what good are those maps? Well, I thought maybe... You thought maybe what? I don't know, but if only there was a connection between those girls who were killed. But there's no connection with anything in this whole business. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Maybe there is. Or, or maybe it's just a, a coincidence. What is? 
Those four neighborhoods. Hey, they, they all got one thing in common. Can you spot it? No. See, each one has a fight club. What? Yeah, the Van Buren Velodrome, Nostrand Gardens, Appleton Arena, and the Grove. Of course, but it, it doesn't have to mean anything, but... Yeah, but maybe it does. The murders all took place on a Friday night. Uh-huh. Friday night was fight night. But last night was Friday night, and and there was no murder. Yeah, but there were no fights scheduled either. But why not? Because it was Good Friday. Oh. All the neighborhood clubs were always dark. So, uh, so where does that leave us? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Harry. Harry, what are you thinking? I don't know. Right now, I'm not really sure of what I'm thinking. Why is it always a woman? Maybe he hates women. And why does she have to have red hair? Hey, we're building something here that's tied in with prize fighting, aren't we? Why can't it be a fighter? A fighter? Yeah, a big guy. Uh-huh. Strong enough to kill somebody with his bare hands. Well, who could that be? I'm not sure. What do you mean, you're not sure? You mean you actually have an idea who it could be? Forget it. Forget it! I might have said too much. And then again, he might not have said enough. We know who the murderer is. That's because we were witnesses to the crime. But our Harry Collins has nothing to go by except, well... He does have quite a bit to go by if you pause to review the evidence. Meanwhile, we shall pause a while and then return for Act Three. Friday on CBS TV. Go ahead. This is your monster. I'm trying. I Meredith, the science teacher who's excited by his first monster on film. But not everyone's jumping for joy. Yeah, monsters. And what about the two strange characters his favorite students have seen? The Strange Monster of Strawberry Cove, a special two-hour Walt Disney, Saturday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain, on CBS TV. That ridiculous story about seeing the monster. I'm Lorette Rupi, director of Peace Corps. In 60 countries around the world, Peace Corps volunteers are sharing their skills and knowledge with people who really need them. But we need more volunteers, and we need them now. Volunteers are urgently needed in agriculture, math, science, and biology. Call Peace Corps now for more information. 800-424-8580. It's the toughest job you'll ever love. A public service message of this station. And Peace Corps. Said no. Do you have the key? Oh. oh, oh, never mind. We forgot to lock the door. I'll hang up the coach, Melvin. Good girl. Oops. Melvin. Mm-hmm. Take a look in the closet. Edna. Yes, Melvin. There's a dog in the closet. Hiya. Hi. 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 Don't worry. It's me, McGruff, the crime dog. Oh, he talks. Of course. How else could I tell you not to leave your door unlocked? Oh, you're McGruff, the crime dog. Edna, you're talking to a dog. I'll uh, say it again. Lock your windows and doors. Use a timer to turn lights on and off. Oh. And uh, tell your neighbors to keep an eye on your house. Good idea. Uh, by the way, you got a neighborhood watch program? Uh, neighborhood watch? <laughs> What's that? Uh, that's where you and your neighbors learn how to protect each other and your neighborhood. Oh. But uh, find out more. Write to McGruff, Box 6600, Rockville, Maryland, and help the uh, rock take a bite out of crime. Edna, lock the door. Gotcha. A message from the Crime Prevention Coalition and the Ad Council. Said is like a two-edged blade. One edge is joy and the other is despair. One cuts away all the tiresome and mundane things that keep us earthbound and sets us free to soar to the height. The other edge can pierce the heart and thus we descend to the depths. Love, what glorious deeds, what desperate crimes are committed in its name. You're saying it's the fighter, Harry. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, but you suspect. Uh, look, let me figure it out first. Now where are you going? I have to see a guy. Hey, Harry. 
What do you want from me now? His last four fights, Chick. He was knocked out in every one, right? It's a matter of record. What happened to him after? After what? After the fight was over. What happens after every fight's over? Goes back to the dressing room, showers, gets dressed, and goes home. How do you know he goes home, Chick? Where else has he got the gold? How do you know he gets home? He's been knocked out. How oh, he takes his count. He's okay. He also takes a beating. How do you know he's okay? see he's okay. Hey, there you are, champ. Uh, put in some time on a big bag, huh? I'll go check out some of the other guys. Hello, Joey. Uh, oh, that's you, Harry. Hey, you want to wake up with me? Uh, no, Joey, no. No, no, I just thought I'd stop in and say house tricks. That's huh? great. That's great. Uh, Joey, you want to come over here and sit for a minute? Yeah, what's up? Joey, quit, will you? Quit the racket. What do you mean, quit? Just like that? Just like that. You mean now? This minute. You know Chick is going to line me up a title shot. Joey, he's not. They promised. Well, how long has he been promised, huh? How long? 20 years, Joey. In 20 years, he got old. Oh, no. It ain't a crime. I got old, too. Oh, for a fighter, that is. Happens to everybody. Ain't going to happen to me. Joey, look around you. Where are you? You know where you even are? Why does everybody try to tell me I don't know where I am? Everybody tries to tell me I'm punchy. I don't know exactly where I am. I'm at Teddy's gym over to West Ward. Well, what's Teddy's gym, Joey? A free bag, a hangout for has been. Joey, hang him up. Go on. Maybe I can help you find something else. Can you? Sure. Where I work. What do you do? I drive a bus. Oh. I don't think I could do that. No, you could start in with uh, something light, like a... Uh, like Watchman. Watchman? What could it pay? More money than you get in the ring. And nobody to beat your brains out. Huh? What do you say? That doesn't sound too bad. Good. Let's go. Where? Over to the garage. I'll talk to the foreman. Come on, come on. Get dressed. I can't go now. Why not? I gotta work some more on the bag. Joey, Joey. No more. That's all. No, but I gotta get into shape for Friday. Friday. Yeah, Chick got me a sixth round at Nostrum Gardens. Uh, see, Joey, tell me, this past month or so, where have you been going after the fights? Where? Yeah. I don't know. Do you... Do you go looking for red? For red? Why would I want to go looking for red? She died. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. She walked out on me. And she ran off with some guy. And she got herself... She got herself killed in an auto accident. Oh. She didn't have no faith in me, you know. So what would I want with a dame that didn't have no faith in me? Hey, you want to come see me fight Friday? No. Why not? Because I think you ought to hang him up. Ah, oh, come on. You're just jealous because you can't fight no more. You got old and I didn't. If that's the way you want to take it, Julie. Listen, Harry. Listen to me. Come to the fight Friday. And watch me, okay? And after, if you say to me, Joey, retire, then that's what I'm going to do. Is it a deal? It's a deal. Hello, Harry. Hey, Lieutenant. How are you doing? I called you to Satcher, Harry, and he told me you'd be here along about now. I want to talk to him. Uh, you mean you found something? Maybe. But I need your help. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Harry, do you know what Monsell's solution is? Uh, sure. A uh, cut man will use it on a fighter to stop bleeding. Uh, especially around the eyes. That's right. What else do you know about it? 41st. Uh, let him off, please. Uh, lady... Lady, uh, put the fare in the box. Uh, what else do I know about Monster's solution? Uh, I know it's illegal. That's right. You can blind a guy. The commission finds a manager or a second that uses it, they'll uh, set him down for life. You think we got a clue, Harry? Huh? Yeah? What? This. See this? What's it look like? Looks like a little piece of plaster. Plaster that you'd stick on a cut. 
<laughs> Many of the times I wore a piece of that after a fight. This dead girl, Madeline Wilson. It was found in her hand. Forty-six. Who's getting off? Step down. Now, we figured she tried to fight the guy off. She must have clawed at his face, caught at this thing, and it came off under her nails. Yeah? Now, at the lab, they found some pieces of hair from an eyebrow. <laughs> I can tell you about getting hit there. That's why I quit. Further tests showed traces of Monsell's solution. Sure. They put it on to stop the bleeding, so the referee won't stop the fight. Does the poor guy risk going blind? <laughs> what do they care? Where did this take us, Henry? These girls were actually beaten to death. A fighter? Uh, yeah, 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 maybe. Kind of a down-and-out fighter, maybe? Kind of boxer that would have an unscrupulous manager? Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Well, we're asking around, trying to get a line on that kind of a guy. I figured I'd talk to you. Who would you suspect? Who? Who would I suspect? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant, and I have been away from it for a couple of years now. I, a couple? Exactly six. Uh, there have been a lot of changes. Anyone come to mind, Harry? Uh, well, look, let me make the rounds, talk to a couple of guys. All right, we can do that. You know how it is in this racket. Nobody likes to talk to a cop. <laughs> you could really help us, Harry. You ready to go, Harry? I told my sister we'd be there for dessert. Uh, listen, Alice, why don't you go downstairs without me? Oh, but you said you wanted to play cards. Uh, Alice, I, I got this headache. I'm just going to lie down and have a nap. Hmm, sure. And as soon as I'm out the door, you'll get up and you'll head for the fights at Nostrand Gardens. No, I think I'll go with you. Alice, I would rather you didn't. Why? Because you hate the fights. Especially the kind I got there tonight. No more than you do. Harry, are you looking for him? Uh, looking for who? Do you know who he is? Tell me. I'm not sure. But you got an idea. Uh, Yeah. Then tell the police. I can't. Why not? Because I could be wrong. Well, then there's no harm done. Yeah, plenty of harm. They could nail him for it. But if he's innocent... If, there's too much going against him. Yeah, but still, if, if he's innocent... Uh, Alice, he could never prove he's innocent. Not even to himself. So what can you do? I want to give him a chance to prove it to me. Uh, one way or another. Innocent or guilty. Come by, Harry. Joey, that was 23 years ago. You sure got some punch, boy. You know something? Joey, I want you to come with me tonight. I can't punch like you, Harry. I ought to quit this racket. Yeah, you sure better. I ought to get out now while I'm still young. I mean, I'm only 22. Uh, Joey, uh, uh, let me help you get dressed. First, I gotta take a shower. Joey, we got no time for that. You wait till I tell Red that I'm quitting. You better tell Chick you're quitting. Huh? Oh, listen, will you, will you do that for me, Harry? Sure. Because I can't talk to Chick. I, I'm a little scared of him. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, here, here. Here, now your shoes. Uh, scared of Chick? Why? Well, uh, he'd talk me out of it. He could make me do anything. I don't even want to see him. Will you, will you take care of it for me, Harry? Sure. Uh, uh, look, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. You just sit here. Wait for me. Don't go anywhere. You hear? Yeah, yeah, sure. Chick, I'm going to take him to the doctor. He's already seen the doctor. Who, that quack? Yes, your name and what day it is. So what do you want, Harry? I'm going to go get my car and bring it around the side. Stay by this door. And see that he don't leave. You understand? Okay, okay. What are you getting so excited? Alice, what are you doing here? I can't trust you out by yourself at night. Uh, okay, okay. Then make yourself useful, huh? 
Drive around to the back entrance. I'll be out with them in a minute. Joey. Joey. Hey, Jack. I told you to keep an eye on him. Where is he? How do I know where he is? You mean you let him go out alone? What's it to you? I don't think you take enough of a cut from Joey. So here's one for me. <laughs> He's gone. Where? He can't be too far. Let's go to the corner, then around the block. Then we'll try two blocks. We've got to find him. We've got to find him. He's looking for Red. Well, who's Red? His wife. She's been dead ten years. But then, then why does he keep looking for her? He wants to tell her he'll quit the ring if she'll come back to him. Oh, but if he knows she's dead. After he takes a bad beat and he goes back. Back, uh, back to when he was young and when he had his red head. And now he's looking for her. Uh, uh, and that's why they all had red hair, all those girls. Huh? Yeah, yeah. We better find him before he runs across another one. Or before the cops get him. And they're close, Alice. I think they're onto him. Well, then why don't we let him... Be- because you'll put up a fight. And they'll have to kill him. Maybe I can bring him in alive. Alice, the end of the block. Look. Red, I love you, Red. Just come back to me. You can't leave me, Red. Joey. I won't let you run away from me again. Joey, let go of her. Joey, it's me, Harry. Harry? It's me, Harry. You and Red and me and Alice, we're supposed to go out after the fight. We were? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh... Hey, I, uh, oh, I guess Red ain't feeling too well. She's, uh, she's gonna faint. Oh, well, let me hold her. Uh, let's get Alice to help her into the car. Uh, okay, Alice? Yeah, sure, sure. You think she'll be okay? Yeah, sure, Joey, she'll be fine. Oh, ain't she beautiful, Harry? Did you ever see red hair like that in all your life? Yeah. Hey, there's cops coming this way. What's that all about? Uh, uh they want to talk to you. They want to talk to me? Why? Nobody ever talks to me, Harry. They talk to my manager. Where's my manager? Harry, Harry, would you be my manager? Uh, uh, yeah, sure, Joey. I'll, 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 I'll be your manager. Uh, from now on, let me manage you. And he did. Of course, there was very little to manage, ring-wise, that is. But Harry saw him through the trial where the verdict was guilty due to insanity. And he visits Joey regularly in the sanitarium where society endeavors to correct its mistakes. Of course, there's no hope for Joey. It's all too far gone. And so I suppose we can say that the punishment fits the crime. Except, of course, that Joey wasn't the only criminal. I shall return shortly. If you'd like to take advantage of the current high interest rates in today's money market, but want your money available when you need it, take a moment now to call this toll-free number, 800-228-5000. Ask the operator to send you information on Dreyfus Liquid Assets. Find out just how much income growth you can get from one of the world's largest money market mutual funds. With Dreyfus Liquid Assets, you have the advantage of making withdrawals by phone, or paying larger bills with free redemption checks and continue earning high yield, compounded daily till your check clears. You can put money in or take it out anytime with never fail charge or penalty. But call now, 800-228-5000 for free information and a prospectus, including management fee, charges, and expenses. 800-228-5000. Study the prospectus carefully before you invest and learn how Dreyfus Liquid Assets can help you get the lion's share from today's high interest rates. 800-228-5000. 800-228-5000. Toll free, 800-228-5000. They end up that way, so many of those boxes. They don't know when to quit. Actually, the majority of them should never have begun. It's called... The sweet science. And it can be as sweet and delightful as a ballet when it is practiced by the true scientist of the art. But you ask any promoter and he'll tell you, (laughs) 
That kind of stuff puts the customers to sleep. What they want to see is blood. Is he right? Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Carol Titel, and Mandel Kramer. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. We never got as far as the Southern Bank. Of the 1,500 with me on the chained rafts, a thousand were blown out of the water. Five hundred were shot as they tried to swim to shore, and the rest of us were rounded up and taken to Andersonville. It was in that action that my leg got shut up. Well, that's never been told. There was only one man to blame, Will, and that's Cutler. He was responsible. When you're locked up and you see five hundred men dying of scurvy, no food worth eating, mush for days, weeks, months. I understood it was pretty fierce. You don't know the half of it, Will. My men, the best men in the world, dead and dying all around me. Because one man gives an order against all common logic and common sense, he orders 1,500 floating, sitting ducks to their death. This is Tammy Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.